Hello, this is Joe Navis. I built this brick barbecue smoker that you're seeing now. I'm living proof that a novice can build one of these. I have never done any brick work, stone work, or metal work in my life. My only previous construction experience was some nominal woodworking skills, building simple furniture pieces, and I had some basic knowledge of car repairs. However, with the instructional articles and videos I found on the internet, I was able to construct in its entirety this barbecue smoker. The only help I had was someone to pour the slab that it rests on. The video which follows is just a brief overview of the construction process. At the end of the video, I will show you how to get access to highly detailed info, including my mistakes on this build. And thanks for watching. The barbecue pit in this photograph is the lower section on the right. And then the smoker column is on the left with the chimney sitting on top there. Here's another view of it uh, from another angle. Here, uh, early on, about three months into the build, uh, you can see I'm using four-inch concrete blocks uh, for the internal structure. A lot of people use the eight-inch deep block, but uh, this thing's going to be pretty thick to start with, so I decided to use four-inch thick block. You can see the rebar that I'm placing in there for uh, sturdiness as we go up. And I'm also, I also put rebar horizontally every two, two levels of concrete units. Here's a view of the smoker end. And you can see these yellow colored bricks. Those are fire bricks. I've elected to line the entire, all, all interior surfaces of my pit with fire brick. Some people say you only need to line it as high as the fire goes, but uh, in my case, I decided to line the whole thing. So there's the fire brick going in place along with the uh, fire clay that's that dark colored substance between the bricks. Here we are going up on the smoker column. You can see the uh, rebar coming up with me. I'm starting to form on the left side there the entrance to the smoker column. That's where the trays for the meat will be placed. This, once again, I'm forming the door for the smoker column. This metal fixture going across here will support bricks going on up to the top of the smoker. It also will help support the door that I'm going to place here, the metal door. Here's the barbecue side of the pit with all the fire brick installed, and I've elected to use uh, removable pieces of uh, rebar to hold expanded steel for a cooking grate. This is the top of the smoker column. It's a fixture I put together to hold the bricks that will go over the top of the column. It will be sealed. Now the square section of the orange fixture there, which is just sheet metal, uh, is where the chimney will be coming out. Uh, here's the pit side again with the uh, some of the fire brick installed along the top edge. You can see it's starting to overlap the entrance. The doors will be set in this center section, the metal lid, you should call them a lid. The lids for the barbecue pit will be set in this center section that you see open here. You can also see the damper mechanism with the wooden handle in place. I'll show that later. i would never used sheet metal before, didn't know anything about it, and this is how I wound up figuring out how to cut it. Is a uh, wooden fence. Actually, that's a piece of wood laminate, nice and straight. You have to make about 30 passes with a uh, metal cutting blade and a skill saw to get a good clean cut. You cannot cut it in one one move. Uh, these are the handles for the uh, fuel doors. I made them out of that metal you saw on the previous slide, and also the wood here is uh, the same kind of wood you buy for uh, cedar pickets for a picket fence. I found out cedar is real easy to work and it doesn't rot. So it's good for outdoor pieces like this. Plus it doesn't get hot. Here they are uh, mocked up onto a couple of pieces of angle iron. This will be the handles that will raise the two doors over the barbecue pit. And here's one of the doors completed. It's been sprayed with a heat, a heat coating of uh, flat black uh, you can see up at the top with the blue star up there, that's the uh, little uh, exhaust opening I put in each door. 
the star is used to clamp it down. I actually, most of the time, I never open these. You can also see the handle uh, laying on the door. I haven't screwed it on here. I'm just looking at placement. Here are the two doors installed into a uh, frame. All of this was cut with 3 16 inch steel on the back of my truck. See the handles in place and the two uh, exhaust vents. Here's a close up of one of the exhaust vents. Uh, these are the kind of hinges that I fabricated. Just a piece of angle iron, a little bit of a bend in it as it goes down onto the lid, and that's a piece of half inch pipe that will be welded on there to hold the hinge. Uh, going up now, it's about half finished. Uh, you can see I've, I've started laying white brick on the outside of the uh, concrete units. In this neighborhood, which is a rural neighborhood, you still, the, anything you construct of masonry has to match your house. So I'm having to use this white brick which matches my house. It's becoming quite a thick barbecue pit. It should be well insulated. This is the opening in the top of the smoker that I fabricated to put the uh, smoker column onto. And in fact, here is the uh, furnace takeoff, which is what this is. It's from a furnace system. It's called a takeoff. And on top of that will go the chimney. This, by the way, has a damper in it an additional damper in addition to the main one, which I'm going to show you shortly. Here's the chimney that I made for the smoker column. This is all 8 inch furnace tubing. Even the top there is a piece of furnace tubing. There it is in place on top of the spark collar. Uh, I wanted to break up the white brick a little bit uh, and so I, had, I created some insets and I'm using these rocks which my neighbor had left over from building his house. Uh, these ones you see here are glued in place with uh, polyurethane adhesive. I will later come along and fill these in with mortar. Matter of fact, here is the back of the barbecue pit. I had a couple of insets back there where I put in these larger stones. They've been mortared in place. They're not coming out. Now, this is the uh, picture of the main damper that goes between the barbecue pit and the smoker column. I wanted to be able to control the amount of heat and smoke coming out of the barbecue pit into the smoker column. Now, all these pieces you see here are made out of aluminum. This video shows you how the damper works. I, this is The camera is down inside the barbecue pit. This is the damper which is going up to close the opening into the uh, smoker column because this is very adjustable. You can see the holes in that damper rod. Here it is from the outside. It's operated with this handle. Close it up. And it, you might notice the holes in there. Those will provide an adjustable opening for the damper. Here is the door to the smoker column completed. I put two racks in there for smoking. What you can't see here is that up above uh, these two racks are some hooks if I wanted to hang anything to smoke. Here's how the doors open. This is the left door. As you can see, they're just lifted up. They're on hinges. And here's the right door going up.